So the next talk is from Joao Gabriel de Almeida from the Federal University of Minas Gerais, Minas Gerais, Brazil. And this is a pre-recorded talk, but I believe Joe will briefly introduce himself before I play his talk. So hi, nice to meet you, Joe. Um, I'll let you hi. introduce yourself in one or two sentences, and then I will play your pre-recorded talk. So the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Valentin. Uh, so uh, hi, everyone. Good morning and good afternoon. Uh, first of all, sorry about the pre-recorded presentation. I uh, I have some some trouble with the internet in the recent days. Um, so I am from Brazil. I work with animal contests, and I hope you can understand my presentation. Thank you. Hi everyone, in my presentation I will talk a little bit about the intriguing behavior between a norb web spider and how this behavior can help us understand animal contest dynamics. Okay, so many animals fight for some resource. This resource can be shelter, this resource can be food or mating partners. Uh, however, these fight structures are not always the same behavior. This structure may vary. Uh, a common structure is an uh, initial phase without physical aggression, so a non-contact phase, where individuals seem to perform a less costly behavior to solve their problems. Uh, but sometimes they are not enough, and individuals can escalate to a phase with physical aggression, so individuals seem to perform a costly behavior that can be related to uh, uh, a higher risk of injuries. Okay, so an important question to understand how this, this contest works is how individuals decide to withdraw. So, an uh, approach frequently used to answer this question is the relationship between the contest cost and the opponent's fighting capacity. This often opponent's fighting capacity uh, will be measured with some morphological traits that individuals use during the fight, and the contest cost is often measured as the contest duration. Okay. So, if individuals perform a self-assessment strategy to decide to withdraw, uh, we expect that uh, individuals use their own threshold cost to, to give up the fight. So, um, if, uh, in this case, we expect that models that predict self-assessment models, uh, self-assessment strategies, uh, we will predict uh, a positive relationship with the contest cost and the loser fighting capacity. On the other hand, if individuals are capable of access uh, or exchange information about each other fighting capacity, uh, so they are performing a mutual assessment strategy, we also predict this positive relationship between loser fighting capacity, so a stronger loser will make the contest last longer. But we also expect a negative relationship between contest cause and winner fighting capacity. So a stronger winner uh, will make uh, the contest last a short period of time that represents the cost. Okay, so uh, many empirical studies try to find support for some of these strategies on the field, but many of them fail to find support uh, for one of these strategies that explains the whole, co the whole contest. Um, one possible explanation for that is that the assessment strategy may vary between contest phases. So, uh, for example, in this species of fish, so males fight for access, of, uh, for access to the females. And uh, the first phase of this contest is a non-context display that males seems to be performing a mutual assessment strategy. So, when evaluating the uh, phase separately, they found, they found uh, a mutual assessment strategy for the first phase of the contest. And the second one, so if males decide to escalate to a physical aggression phase, males seem to perform a self-assessment strategy. Therefore, there is this possibility that assessment strategies may vary between contest phases. On the other hand, uh, there is another possibility. This is a more intriguing one. So the assessment strategy may vary between individuals. 
Um, in this study, they used a different approach. So they evaluate contests with different out with different outcomes. Sorry. So uh, the first interaction of this contest is a non-contact displays, an internet touch between the crickets. So if this contest ends in this non-contact display, uh, may you seem to perform a self-assessment strategy. Uh, but in the contest that precedes a physical aggression, uh, they found support for a mutual assessment strategy, uh, which uh, means that uh, this approach is an efficient approach to test the possibility that the assessment strategy may vary between individuals. Um, okay, so uh, a species that many empirical studies trying to find support for uh, assessment strategies is the spider Triconephala clavips. So here we have a female web, and in the central position we have the female, uh, the bigger one, and we also have uh, the central male. So the central male guards the central position with the female and try to expel the other males that approach the female, so the peripheral position males. Okay, so how this fight uh, works? So uh, here we have a video. Uh, the central male will approach, uh, doing vibration, uh, sorry, the peripheral male will, will do this vibration interaction, and the central male will respond, and as quickly as possible, he will try to expel the peripheral male. Uh, what we observe is that uh, this vibration displays represents the first phase of the contest, so the peripheral male starts with this vibration interaction and the central male responds. The contest may escalate to a physical aggression phase, but uh, most of the contest, so more than a half of the contest, ends in this vibration phase. So, um, therefore, this vibration interaction seems to be very important to understand this spider contest dynamic. Okay, so we ask ourselves, what is the function of this vibration display in a contest of T. clavitz males? That was our question. Uh, our first hypothesis is that males prefer mutual assessment strategy because they are doing this vibration interaction. In this case, they do this vibration and exchange information about each other fighting capacity and decide to withdraw or decide to escalate to a physical aggression phase to decide who is the winner. On the other hand, uh, we decide to test the possibility that the assessment strategies may vary between individuals. Uh, so we separate contests with different outcomes. So for contests that the vibration interaction uh, precedes the ends of the contest, we expect a self-assessment strategy. On the other hand, if individuals are performing um, this, this vibration interaction and um, after that, they do the, the physical aggression phase. Uh, these individuals uh, may uh, be uh, uh, fighting capacity matched and can exchange this information and escalate to a different phase. So, in this case, individuals will be performing a mutual assessment strategy. Uh, okay, so what we did uh, to test this hypothesis, first of all, we measured the fighting capacity as the length of male's frontal legs. We use this proxy because males uh, do the vibration interaction with the front, their frontal legs, and in the physical phase, they try to grab each other using this, their frontal legs. Uh, to measure the vibration interaction cost, we recorded the duration of the vibration interaction of each contest. And to test the possibility that the assessment strategy may vary within individuals, we separate interactions duration from contests with different outcomes. So, in this case, we test the vibration interactions uh, separately from contests that ends in the vibration interaction and the contest that precedes a physical aggression phase. And what we expect for both hypotheses? So, first of all, uh, we expect for, uh, for mutual assessment strategy that this contest can end or this contest can uh, predict a physical aggression phase and we expect what mutual assessment models predict. So uh, here we have in x-axis the frontal leg length of males and here in y-axis the duration of the vibration interaction. Uh, so we expect a positive relationship for loser rivals and a negative relationship for winner rivals. Uh, the same predictions of mutual assessment models. Okay, 
and what to expect for our second hypothesis. So we have males that can be performing a mutual assessment strategy and we have males that can be performing a self-assessment strategy. So for fights that precede physical aggression, so males can be adopting a mutual assessment ass uh, strategy, we predict, we predict the same predictions of our first hypothesis. On the other hand, for vibrations that precede the contest end, we predict only an interaction between a uh, relationship between the duration of the vibrational uh, interaction and the front leg length of loser males. We only expect this positive relationship. Okay, and what we found? So, uh, first, for the vibration that precedes physical aggression, we found that the vibration interaction duration was unrelated to front leg length of these loser males. Uh, on the other hand, we found that the vibration interaction duration was negatively related to frontal leg length of winner males. And for fi fights that precede the contest end, we found that the vibration interaction duration was again unrelated to front leg length of loser males. And we found that the vibration interaction duration was positive related from uh, frontal leg lengths of winner males. Uh, in, the, in the both case, we found that the uh, one unexpected results from both of our hypotheses. Therefore, uh, unfortunately, our spider sense does not work all the times, and we have to try to explain uh, what could be happen in this animal contest. So, first for our result that we found that the duration of the vibration interaction is negative related with the front leg length of winner males, uh, we know that this contest escalates more frequently when involves two males of a greater, greater, greater size. So, bigger body males seems to uh, get more in the physical aggression phase. Uh, therefore, these results may indicate that aggressiveness is positively, positively related with size. In this case, what has happened is that males may escalate based on a size-based aggressiveness. Um, so, I have a video to show here that we have two uh, bigger males, so greater body size males, that uh, quickly uh, go to the vibration interaction to a physical aggression phase. That, that can happen uh, when you have two bigger males, so males seem to be more aggressive when they are uh, bigger males. Okay, so and for our contest, uh, for our result that we found in fights that precedes uh, that the vibration interaction precedes the ends of the contest, we found this positive relationship between duration and the fighting capacity. So we know that when loser may withdraw, sometimes the winner keeps vibrating the web. He keeps doing this display of vibration. What can could be happen is that males may escalate based on size-based aggressiveness. So these males will do the vibration. The peripheral male will, or the loser male will decide to not escalate, so he will withdraw the contest, and this male will continue to do this vibration because he is doing a brawl beating display to, to other peripheral males. So um, in general, he's he's showing to other males, to other peripheral males, that he's a better male, that he's a stronger male, that he's a more aggressive, more more a bigger male, uh, so he's a better male. Um, this explanation seems a little curious, but believe me, there is support for that in other, another species. You just have to go to a CrossFit club and you can find support for that. Okay, and overall, uh, we highlight that this contest structure in phases is widespread in different taxes, uh, but in many empirical studies, uh, we, we still found this, this, uh, this test of only two assessment strategies, and few studies have evaluated the possibility of assessment strategy variation with, between individuals. Um, so they try to test only the presence of one assessment strategy, and we can be uh, missing information because of this approach. So um, an implication for our study is that we strongly, uh, sup uh, we strongly recommended that there is a possibility that in, uh, assessment strategy variation is gr greater than we thought when we should try to test this possibility um, 
in, in every study that is possible. So uh, this, this different approach give, uh, give us new insights about uh, assessment strategy of animal contests. Uh, so as take home message, I leave you that this, uh, the results we didn't find support for mutual or self-assessment strategy in vibration interaction of t clavis males. The vibration phase may be explained by a size-based aggressiveness that are dependent on intruder motivation to escalate. And an overall implication is that we highlight the importance to evaluate different phase with different outcomes to understand animal contest dynamics. Okay, so thank you for everyone that helped me in that work and thank you all. Thank you very much, Joao, for your talk. This was very good. I won't ask you who your favorite superhero is because I think that was quite obvious from the talk. Um, so let me have a look at the chat. Yes, we do have questions already. So I will start by chat questions. The first question is from Natasha. She says, great talk and then asks, if bigger males are more likely to win, how are small males maintained in the population? Um, sorry, I, I just understand the, the first part of the question. Uh, can, can you repeat yes. this? Yes, of course. So the question is, if bigger males are more likely to win, how are small males maintained in the population? Thank you for the question. I, I think I think this this question is the next step, basically, because uh, I I stayed on the field for at least four months, and I, it doesn't seem that peripheral males, smaller males, have uh, alternative mating tactic. Um, I I didn't I didn't see many many sneaker mating uh, during the, the the experiment, so. I, I really don't know why these these smaller males are doing if they they can approach the female. Um, th there is the possibility that the central male uh, leaves the central position uh, uh, because he 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 die in some way, so the female can 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 prey the male during the mate, or the male can die before the female uh, ov ov posits. So there is a possibility that this the peripheral male. Just um, just wait for the central position to get free to to try to to mate with the female. Thank you. A second question from Lucie de Cellier. Very interesting. Is it a lab experiment? And second question: How many interactions did you observe? Sorry, the first one. Uh, so, is it a lab experiment? Okay. Okay. No, it was a, a field observation. Um, I, I was on the field for almost four months, and I, I saw, um, I think it was uh, 41 fights uh, in, this, in this period, but um, more than a half did not escalate. Okay, thank you. And I have a question, Michael, but maybe I've missed it from your talk. Maybe I didn't pay attention, but so your main assumption was that there are many cues uh, transmitted by these vibrations, but how could you exclude all the cues, so, such as visual cues, for instance? Do you think these spiders are not able to estimate the size of the, the other fighter just by seeing them? It seems a, a little bit. Um, um, I I think my, my first hypothesis would be the the vibration uh, cues because uh, our web spiders in general are vi vibration directly or oriented. Uh, so uh, in many times on the field, uh, it doesn't seem that males um, can can pierce perceive the presence of other males because of the vision. So male, peripheral males have to move to, to other males to, 
to, to approach and, and try to expel them. So I think it's very uh, improbable that the, the visual direction is important in this mail. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we are over the time. So I thank you again for your very nice talk. Should anyone else have questions, they can ask you in your dedicated channel in Discord, if you are happy to answer them there. Um, thanks again, Joel. And I will uh, let you leave the Zoom meeting and see you around. Thank you. Thank you, Valentin. Thank you all.